just recently, um, kind of a, like a challenge, you know, how you can come home from work, it's so easy to put the oven on and make pizzas or chicken fillets or whatever, things that you put into the oven. So I thought, I'll show you a quick dish. Now, this really is a bit of a challenge because I'm going to do it in real time. I'm also going to do it with the new Oriental Chef thing that I bought the other day from the charity shop, which so far I haven't used yet. But cameraman says, Kenneth, husband, says it will actually make quite a good thing for you to be able to see in. So first and foremost, like I said to you, have your kettle on. That saves time. It saves a lot of time. So tonight we're going to make pasta. And we're literally just going to be making things that are uh, handy, you know, available to hand. It's great if you've, you know, using fresh vegetables and things, but it's not essential. Have things in reserve. So for like so tonight, we're going to use frozen veg. So first and foremost, water into the pot, and that gets you started straight away, because everything else I'm going to do tonight is going to be timed around how long it's going to take the pasta to cook. So boil the water, in with the pasta, let it come down, and once it comes back to the boil, the pasta should only take 14 minutes. So whilst I'm letting that go down, I've left out my pasta fork, but we'll just use that one tonight. Let it get down. We'll heat this wok, which is going to be quite funny, because like I say, I've never used it before. But I don't know if you were actually watching the other night when I was telling people. We've got this charity shop in Orkney called The Blue Door. And every week it's a different club or organisation that gets to hire it out for the week. So, you know, like some netball or pony club or football, rugby, whichever. So, the idea behind it is obviously funds for the clubs and also a very quick turnaround. So, I went in the other day and got this cast iron electric wok for £2. Don't tell anyone, but I steal. But we'll just turn that back. Now, I'm going to set my timer so as we no, we've only got 14 minutes to cook, 14 minutes and it's on. So on with the wok, boil into your wok, or a pan actually, obviously you'll probably, people will likely just be doing this in a pan. And then we will have some fresh veg going into it, we're going to have an onion. And that's going to be my concession to fresh vegetables tonight, one onion. So roughly chopped. I'm not a chef, so you won't see me doing all the fancy chopping and things. Just be nice and quick into your pan so as we can get started to cook here. Now, I might keep having to go back and forward here because like, I'm not quite sure when this will get up to, to heat and things. The one thing I can guarantee you is if you use pots and things that you normally do, this will work. You can have a wee bit of a uh, pail of sorry for the man behind the camera here. This might not work for us tonight, but this is our dinner. Whether it works or not, this is what we are eating. So we're wanting to get the onion into the hot oil. I think it's starting to look as though it's getting hot anyway. Just see if it goes up anymore. No, that's up as high as it goes. It's feeling rather warm. So we'll just put it in anyway. It'll heat as it goes. Oh, there we go. I'll even tidy up tonight as I go. So, we're just wanting to get these frying up a little. Just want them to soften. You okay in here? Okay. What we're going to use tonight is frozen mixed veg. 150 grams should be plenty for it. In fact, I'll put that back up because of the fact that it's frozen, otherwise it'll take the heat right out. Toss them about, just get them coated. And then what we're going to do is Add some corn flour. The corn flour will just stick in your sauce. 
and you can put it directly onto the, the, the food that you're cooking onto your vegetables. So probably about a dessert spoon, maybe a dessert spoon and a half. We can always add more liquid to it, kind of it looks a bit thin, a bit thick, sorry. A dessert spoon and a half. Pass it round, pass it round. It won't look very nice at this point, but that's okay because you're just about to add some of that magic hot water that I was talking about. Keep it in reserve. Now all we're really doing here is trying to get the veg to cook up a bit. I'm going to add some milk to it, just ordinary cold milk, full fat, everything I do is full fat. I don't always use cream, but I always use film fat milk. And that'll just make it appear like a creamy sauce. Now, what I'm going to actually say to you tonight is maybe something that you've never really thought about. Tonight I'm using turkey, because we had some turkey left over from Christmas. So I've just defrosted, I think I've defrosted too much, but I've actually I've got a sick cat, so my cat's going to get some. We were told the other day he's got terminal cancer, so we're, treat, we're spoiling him a wee bit and he's going to get some of this turkey. When you're in the shops, um, you sometimes see like sandwich fillers, um, like roast chicken that's already cooked and things. You possibly say, oh, I never eat sandwiches or whatever. Ideal for this, because then it's cooked. You're not even needing to think about cooking. It's through, you know, because I mean, like, it, we're wanting this to be quick. I have to stop trying to, I have to stop saying, like I say. It started, I'm starting to notice my wee foibles. Stock. This was the stock I was telling you about the other day, the Polish stock. A teaspoon and a half should be plenty. That's going to give some flavour. The garlic, of course. Good sized teaspoon. Right, we'll stick another one in. A teaspoon and a half. And I've got my cameraman telling me something and I don't know what. It's granules, yes. Somebody asked me what kind of garlic I used the other day. And I do just use uh, garlic granules. Great. They're handy. They don't go off, you know. They're quick for this kind of dish. Turn that down. We're not needing it to be overcooking or overheating. Now, this is really ready. We're now just waiting on the pasta, which has got a mind of its own here, it's like Vesuvius. We'll add the meat. Now, I don't mind actually if my meat falls to bits. If people prefer it not to go stringy, that's fine. You know, leave it till the, even further on, you know, just the, till the last minutes. But I'm going to leave that for my poor old Zig. All we're really needing to do now is cover that up and let the vegetables cook through. I'm going to taste it tonight though, just to make sure it doesn't need anything else added. No. For pasta, that is fine. You don't want pasta to be overwhelmed with flavour. The other thing I could say to you about this particular dish is, if you want it thicker, it's great with rice. It becomes almost like a fricassee if you make it thicker and with rice. I want it to be kept reasonably loose because we're going to put the pasta in here and toss it through. So you're wanting it, you want it to be loose enough that it's going to um, grasp the pasta, you know, so as it's going to actually stick to the pasta. That's what we're wanting here. So we're just letting this cook through. We need a wee bit of heat again. There we go. I think I must have turned that round the wrong way the last time. Put them away. Now, the other day I was telling you about how uh, I'd met my husband and how the girls had found some of my stories quite amu amusing. But then it actually occurred to me that some of these videos might not be going up in sequence. <laughs> so, 
If you don't know what I'm talking about in one of my videos, <laughs> you might actually know by the next one or the one after that. But, oh, this is definitely something to watch. This, walk, this is a, a hot, hot potato. Must be because it's cast iron, of course. I think I'll just put a lid on that. Because I think I'm starting to feel a little bit warm. Oh, excuse me. So where are we at? My goodness, we've got six minutes left. This pasta might not actually take 14 minutes. It's This one said about 10, so I'll maybe check it in just a couple of minutes. But if we don't actually cook out the vegetables, they might still be a wee bit hard. So, I could just tell you a little bit more about us whilst we're waiting on this all cooking. Some of you that follow the Orkney News, some of you that, that was the cameraman's fault, I'll just blame him, he's telling me my windows are steaming up, but uh, it's a wee bit windy out there. We do live in Orkney after all, and uh, open the windows and if somebody comes in the front door, we'll land over in Shappensay, which is just about two miles across the way, different island. Some of you may actually um, be following us already in the Orkney News and might be aware of uh, a bit of our story when we got our collie dog. We bought our uh, collie dog about eight years ago and oh my goodness he became the, the love of my life and a joy to behold. The bandit at the age of uh, 20 months went blind and we were faced with quite a decision you know whether or not we would have to have him put down obviously or you know just what would we do. Well we were in a kind of position that I was between jobs so we decided to actually just um, pull in the, the old belts you know and I would stay home and look after Bandit. Now when you have to, when you're faced with these kind of choices they're not easy to make but I can guarantee I've never looked back. He's a wonderful dog and the joy that he gives is quite incredible and people just do not believe that he's blind. Even though a couple of years on he ended up having to get his eyes removed, you wouldn't know. I mean he just, in fact, strange thing, we've actually lost less balls since Bandit went blind than we did when he could see. Because now he's become really stubborn and he'll just not give up. So he just keeps hunting and hunting and hunting until he finds them. But one of these days, well maybe do a wee bit of footage or something of it outside and you'll be able to see what like we are outside of the kitchen as well. So I think I, I told you obviously I married my husband. Um, we've got two children, two girls, one 24, one 19. So at the stage that you never see them home, they're always just out and about. So again, which was what I was talking about the other night when I said about the garlic, I'm forever having to check what they're up to that night. As with many of us, of course, I suppose, we don't want to be going around if you're going to work or whatever, you're maybe not wanting to be stinking of garlic. My food has always got garlic in it though. That is one thing you will get quite used to when I'm cooking. There's garlic goes into everything. Because I just think it's the thing that gives you the flavour. But I think my pasta, ahead of schedule, is going to be ready. I'd used a different brand tonight and I think I'm going to go with something they say 10 minutes. So I'm just going to drain that very quickly. I will come back and wash this later. I'll just put it up here on the road just now. And then this, this goes straight in. Now don't worry if you've got a wee bit of extra liquid because the starch will just thicken your dish up a little bit again and this just goes straight in to your sauce and ahead of schedule that is your dinner for tonight now it doesn't really have a name it's just creamy spaghetti so I think that's what we'll call it will we creamy spaghetti and I don't think I'm even going to serve it I think we're just going to see if we can tip it over to let you see it one of the handles was missing, drawback of buying second hand goods, but never mind. 
And that is tonight's dinner in what took us 12 and a half minutes. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you.